I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Henrik Sorensen, the CTO of eMoney. Henrik, welcome to the show. Thanks for taking the time to be here today. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, I'd love to learn a little bit more about eMoney. I've been researching into your platform and you're adding a twist to the DeFi ecosystem and stable coins and some really interesting assets that you've created. And I would love for you to kick it off for the viewers with just a high level overview of what is eMoney and then we can dive into those details. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the nice comments. Um, what we're trying to do is we will provide, we're providing uh, stable coins, which is in itself not super original, but uh, we have added a few twists that make them uh, very attractive, we believe, to the DeFi ecosystem and the blockchain uh, system in general. Mm -hmm. So our, our, block, our stable coins are based on the, a number of European currencies. At the moment, it's the Euro and the Swiss franc and some of the Scandinavian currencies. We have um, we are fully compliant uh, with the regulatory environment in Europe at the moment. And uh, we have uh, we have uh, managed to convince one of the big four auditing firms to provide a regular proof of funds. So that, um, mm -hmm. that uh, sets us apart from a number of the other stable coins, we believe. On top of that, we're building um, on uh, on a uh, on a technology that allows us to future-proof the payment services. So you could say that we're kind of envisioning a future where people pay with the stable coins without really realizing there's a blockchain hiding in the background. They're just transferring mm -hmm. value, and the way we've done this is to make sure that the the chain is very fast and can can basically finalize a transaction in about half a second. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that's a great intro. Thank you very much for that. And I'm interested to hear more on all of those aspects. First of all, with the eMoney stablecoin, backing it by European currencies, uh, there are many different collateralized algorithmic stablecoins that are popping up. And, you know, Tether is supposed to be backed by American dollars. Um, who knows if it's fully backed by it. But to back it by a basket of European currencies is interesting. Do you think that that's a strong uh, way to be able to back stable coins on the blockchain? Yeah, it, it's it's actually not so much as a, a basket of currencies as it is a number of individual stable coins, each one backed by a single currency. Okay. It's, uh, um, it's, um, it's, it's uh, in regarding the backing, it's a uh, slightly dull. It's actually just backed by simple bank deposits. And uh, mm -hmm. once our bank starts thinking there's a uh, the deposits that go too high will be adding some uh, some government bonds and some uh, mm. very secure assets in the same same uh, same currency to 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 the to the reserve account. Mm -hmm. So in in that way, it's uh, incredibly incredibly boring almost, uh, but also very <laughs> secure. Yeah. It's um, the idea is to create something exceptionally stable that uh, mm -hmm. people can predict the value of uh, in in a in Definitely. the future. Definitely. And with moving those stable coins into the DeFi decentralized finance ecosystem, what are some of the advantages on these types of assets as opposed to using other digital assets in DeFi? It's um the the main uh, the main um the main advantage is uh, having a, a predictable store of value essentially so in a, mm -hmm. in a, in one of the local currencies We've had, um, we've actually, we've talked to some of the institutional uh, people who are very excited about having a euro-based uh, stablecoin because they are a little bit afraid of some of the regulatory complications regarding having US dollar stablecoins, mm -hmm. which they see as uh, a little bit unpredictable. So that's that. Uh, that would be the main advantage, mm -hmm. essentially. That's great. And I was reading into the technology behind these stable coins and I saw that you partnered with Tendermint and Cosmos blockchain. Um, we did have Cosmos team on our show recently talking about their inner blockchain communication protocol uh, that they've come out with. And it seems like their technology is pretty well developed. Can you talk about the technology underlying uh, the stable coins and why you're going with this type of technology? It, uh, it's true, we are, we are building on the Tendermint and the Cosmos SDK technology, which we are incredibly happy with. We started out three years ago and picked that technology due to the vision they had of uh, 
proof of stake, instant finality, and also the inter-blockchain communication that they released uh, recently. We we believe that the future in large parts lies in, in, in connecting disparate blockchains and, and exchanging tokens and value across blockchains. We see that as a very interesting prospect where, where an ecosystem can develop and and projects can use each other's tokens in, in, in ways that uh, can be hard to predict once you when you set up your own project. It's That's, also it's also yeah. the Tendermint and Cosmos stack that has uh, enabled us to build this uh, very fast uh, transaction finalization thing I started I talked about in the beginning where we where we essentially create a block as soon as the transaction is available which which means that transfers can usually be achieved in like half a second. Mm -hmm. Wow that's what's needed in the industry because right now it's a little slow and expensive on the Ethereum DeFi ecosystem. Now building on Cosmos are you still able to connect to the the network effect of the Ethereum DeFi ecosystem and other future protocols that are running DeFi uh, through through this multi blockchain uh, you know connection. Yes, uh, yes, we are. That's a very good question. We actually very recently launched uh, our bridge to Ethereum, so our tokens are now also available as ESC twenty tokens. And while it's true that Ethereum is kind of congested and incredibly expensive to to do anything on. It's also where things are happening at the moment, so it's not something that we want or can't ignore. Um, so, so we, we prioritized building that bridge uh, recently, and uh, what we're working on now is uh, upgrading the blockchain software to, so we can also connect to the Cosmos Hub uh, using the mm -hmm. IBC technology that we've been 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 looking very much forward to while we've been working with on this. Definitely, and I think it's very smart to be moving to the Ethereum ecosystem despite any uh, issues that it has just because that's just where the majority of DeFi is going on right now and you mentioned you're moving your token over there I want to talk about the eMoney NGM token and just in terms of the platform overall the functionality and how it's used for the participants and it, does it create a sustainable ecosystem for eMoney uh, with NGM yeah NGM is our staking token. Our chain is a uh, proof of stake. So we need, so on a technical level, it's used to, to secure that uh, the proof of stake works and that no, uh, the chain is very difficult to attack. Um, we have added the functionality that, let me start another place. Our yep. tokens, which I haven't mentioned earlier, are, our stablecoin tokens are actually interest bearing. So they will be, they will have an interest that resembles the interest that is uh, of the underlying currency. Okay. So uh, this has allowed us to create a model where we, much like a traditional bank, we add a markup on, of interest on the, on the staple coins. This, this markup is then used to purchase and burn in gem tokens. So, we, so our platform, our model on its own creates a purchase uh, pressure on the NGM token. In essence, this means that the larger, the size of the, um, of the stablecoin issuance will will have an impact on uh, the buy this buyback mechanism and ensure the, that the buyback pressure will increase. Mm -hmm. So, you could say that the the intrinsic value of the NGM token will increase with the uh, with the in issuance. This means that our token can also be used for um, creating an ecosystem. We can we we've set aside a pool of NGM tokens for encouraging partnerships and. And incentivizing um, exchanges and and other projects if 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 we find a good synergy somewhere. Mm -hmm. so, so, I I don't know if we're the only ones, but I mean I think there are not very many stablecoin projects where they uh, make it possible to share the the income, so to say, in a tokenized in a tokenized manner, not the asset backed stablecoins at least. Definitely, yeah. No, I think that's. Uh, really great and I think for people to understand clearer one of the ways that you're saying is that by staking stable coins in DeFi in, in certain protocols you're also able to interact and get the NGM token or at least it helps the cycle of the token uh, move through the ecosystem yeah yeah we are we're, we're working on models for for example incentivizing liquidity uh, mm -hmm. providers to provide yeah, liquidity uh, and being rewarded uh, also in NGM. Um, so things like that are mm -hmm. on the table right now. Um, 
Are, do you guys have multiple, st like how many stablecoin different assets do you have within eMoney and are you, is that the final or are you expanding out in the types of stablecoins and other tokens that you're creating? Right now we have five. We have the we have the euro and the Swiss franc, and then the Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish krona. Okay. Um, we we want to expand. It's 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 not currently it's not a priority, but in the longer term we want to expand to to more currencies. Mm -hmm. It could also depend on finding finding the right partner that can uh, deliver the services that we provide. But maybe for mm -hmm. for for example uh, some of the Asian currencies. But it, it requires that we have the resources to look into the regulatory aspects in, in, in other countries. So at the moment, what we're trying to achieve is uh, gaining adoption for the stable coins. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I was going to ask you about that. With the five assets that you have right now, uh, are you incentivizing adoption uh, to use these types of assets in the DeFi ecosystem through... Uh, the NGM rewards, are there other incentivizations or all you all, are you also expecting just organic growth of the platform? We're talking to some specific partners uh, about uh, adopting the stable coins and using them. We'll be making, we'll be adding more generic functionality for, for, for example, liquidity pools mm -hmm. uh, that people can, can, can join and then gain an NGM and, um, rewards. And we could also simply with the right project or the right partners, we could uh, provide a bag of NGM for, for them to, to adopt it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's our primary focus right now is uh, gaining the initial adoption for, for these stable mm -hmm. points. And we're actually talking to some fairly interesting people regarding that. That's great, Henrik. And it Thanks. sounds like you have a couple different things that you have in the works right now, um, you know, potentially expanding the currencies, the platform. For your roadmap in the next six months throughout the summer of 2021, what are the main focuses or are you trying to bring out any major developments to the to the platform uh, you know, in the near future? Yeah, we want to we want to bridge more networks right now. We bridge Ethereum and we want to we're looking into bridging to uh, Avalanche. We're bring, mm. We'll bridge uh, Cosmos up. Uh, we look into bridging to Binance chain. In addition to that, we what we need for for stable coins to to make sense, we need to have ways for people to obtain them and get rid of them, so to say, like uh, mm -hmm. exchange them back to something else. So we'll be looking into on and off ramps for for that. Um, there'll be crypto on and off ramps for, in the form of liquidity providers, and we're also looking to onboard the uh, credit card uh, payment mm -hmm. service as well uh, in in the near future. Definitely. And for people that are interested in starting to experiment with the stablecoins on eMoney, uh, NGM, do they get it off a primary market or is it available on any markets? And what's the easiest way for them to get involved? Right now, the easiest way to get the, obtain the NGM token is to either get it on uh, Ascendex, the former mm -hmm. exchange formerly known as BitMEX, uh, or simply go to the Uniswap pool we've created uh, mm -hmm. for, for trading them. We will be looking into creating pools for the stable coins as well, but we are actually waiting for Uniswap version three because mm -hmm. that has functionality that is especially well suited for stable coins. Oh. So we will hopefully, yeah, we will take advantage of that for for for, for creating liquidity pools for for, for the stable coins. Mm. Very good to know, and I'm excited for Uniswap version three as well. So uh, <laughs> I, I love to follow you. along, yeah, with eMoney as that plays out. Um, and for the viewers that want to just learn more about your updates when they're coming out, get involved with the, co the community, what's the best way for them to get involved? They can, um, they can go to our, e our website, which is emoney.com. It's fairly easy to remember. Uh, we have some Telegram channels with uh, announcements. And we also have a general Telegram channel for ch asking questions and chatting. Um, and there's obviously also our Twitter account, which uh, brings all the news. Definitely. Okay. Well, I will leave all of those links in the description box below as well. Thank you so much for taking the time, Henrik, to speak about eMoney and all of the interesting stable coins and assets that you're working on in this platform. All the best uh, with the updates and let's follow up in the near future. Yeah, definitely. And thank you for having me again on the show.